Django offers excellent support for translation. In this video, we will concentrate on the translation of uh, strings that are somewhere in our model, in our forms, in our views, or anywhere in our templates. Obviously, there is also the content which is on the pages. Um, this will be subject of another video. First thing to do is to tell Django that um, we will be using multiple languages and that has to be done in the settings. So here are the settings and there we have to change a couple of things. First of all, let's change this just to plain English and then we are going to add some languages. In our case, we're going to add French and Dutch. Um, then the next thing is that we need to add some middleware. Now I will explain that um, because Django is telling us, telling us exactly how to do that. Um, here, um, this paragraph is very, very uh, good to, to read because it explains how Django finds the languages and how it translates these languages. And what we have to do is to put Django middleware, local, local middleware in our middleware setting. So, and it has to be in a specific order, which is explained here. So let's do that. It has to be there, right after session middleware and before common middleware. Now we have to change our URL patterns because the URL patterns um, that Django has will have uh, language prefixes for them so that we can use essentially the same URL, but then for different languages. This has to be done in our urls.py and here we need to add something which is called, let me put it in first, i18n patterns and what this does is it attaches a prefix. You can see that we add this to these patterns, we add them to existing URL patterns like this and anything that you, you would like to have a prefix for you have to put in there. So what we will do is the two URL paths that we have created ourselves, we'll take them out here and put them in here so that they will be prefixed with the language prefix. You can see that we still have to import this, so let's do that at the top. Let's put it here. And now we can already check whether the prefixes are working. So let's start up our project. Go to our page, reload this, and see if we can actually um, bring up a French logon log page. Login page, is this correct? Yes, should be correct. And there we, well, we already, probably already logged in, so let's log out. Log out. We want to sign out, and we can already sign in as well. You can see that we use the French prefix and it will bring us to a French page where there are already some translations. Now we haven't translated anything so this is probably because they're in the libraries that we have imported like for example all of there are so already some translations and Django is picking these up. But for example, the sentences that we put there ourselves, like this one, don't have an account, these are not translated because we have to do that ourselves. The way to do that is also explained by Django. So this is the language prefix. Um, going further, there is the concept of message files. How it works is that Django picks up all the things that need to be translated via essentially two things. First of all, the function get text. Um, that we have seen in previous tutorials as well. And the second thing is the translate template tag, like trans and block trans. These message files have to be put in a directory called local, which is at project level. So let's create that. Directory local. And we have to make Django aware of this by going to the settings and importing that. Let's put it here somewhere. So local paths, that's the parameter that we need and we need to tell it that the local directory is right there. 
Now we're ready to make a local directory in there and we have to go out of the server now because we need to input this command django admin make messages and then we'll make the French uh, message file. The commands are all in here. Here's the example for German, for example. So let's do this. Oh, typing mistake. It should be messages, plural. This is better. And there should be our French translation. So let's see how it looks like. Here is the file. Now the file is here. You can see, make messages, and there we have our French translation. At least there is the file with all the um, words and sentences that have to be translated and that are picked up via either gettex or trans. So you see that there's lots of things here. Um, Actually, many of these things you can see are picked up from environment files and most of these things will probably never end up in our sites because um, we didn't use them in any possible way. So you could just leave them out, but um, if you're not sure that they might still end up on your site, then you have to translate all of these as well. Um, let's look for some words and sentences that we put in ourselves like for example here now this is um, okay here we have some some things that we put in ourselves user auth first name well let's translate this in french prénom i think that's all an accent prénom and then last name Nom de famille and display name no, pseudo pseudo etc. And you have to do all of this. Um, date of birth, date de naissance, and well, um, this is too long, obviously, for doing it now. But basically, when you've finished all of these words and sentences then um, you're ready to compile all of these messages so let's do that as well the command for this is django admin compile messages local french and then the messages are translated and then if everything is all right then we have a second file here which is called django.mo which contained contains the compiled language. This is something that we cannot read because it's uh, a lot of code in there. Now this should be fine. Let's go over to our site and see if we can bring this up. Let's log in. I think we can log in with Google now because we have uh, identified ourselves with Google the last time. So let's do that. Okay. Oh, yeah, this is something. Yeah, I should have uh, foreseen that. What happens now is that the callback URL from Google has this language prefix in it, and that is not recognized by Google. So we have to tell Google that this is a valid callback. So if you don't mind, I'll just go to Google and we'll be back in a minute and have this fixed. I'm back again. I just went to the Google Developers Console and added the callback for the two languages that we um, have added. And now let's try to log in again with Google. This is much better. And there we are. Oh, this is still English. So let's change this to French. And now we have some words already that we translated, like for example, nom pseudo and prénom, nom de famille. This is something that we just change, and you can see that it's already changed in the code profile template. Date de naissance, which is birth date, uh, date of birth. So everything is changed that we have actually changed in the .po file. Uh, the bad news is that we have to do that for every string here 
that we put in any template in all our sites. Thank you for your patience. I've taken some time to translate all the fields here and complete the translation files so that now this is um, fully in French. Um, now there's one thing we have to repair, as you might have noticed just a second ago, is that when we were logging in, I'll show you that again, we were redirected to the <coughs> profile page, but we were redirected to the English profile page. And this is not what we want, obviously, because we want to be redirected to the French <coughs> profile page. Now you see what's happening, it's redirecting to the English profile page. And this is because Olaf and also Django um, has a login redirect URL which defaults to accounts slash profile but it doesn't have a prefix. Let me show you that. Here we are and here is the login view and you can see that the login redirect URL as a default account slash profile without any prefix. So it will go to the default language, which is English in our case. In order to repair that, we have to go to our settings file and redefine the login redirect URL. So let's do that. Let's put it here. Um, this is redefining the login URL. Let's do that at the same time. And also the um, redirect url we use the name account profile and account login which we have named in our urls.py and we use the reverse of that and by doing this we ensure that django has to go through urls.py including the prefix so this should do the job let's include the reverse lazy function at the top here and then try it out Okay, so if it's still running, let's go to the login page. Let's log out. And go to the login page again in French. We log in. And then we are redirected to the French profile page, which is exactly what we wanted. That's it for now. Next time we will concentrate on translating the content of the pages.